Now I should add that the light here is heartbreakingly beautiful. The marsh is green gold, the creek water clear. How there comes a desire simply to merge with it, to lie down, curl one's body into an earth shape, die with the leaves, bend into that lucent sky, become the vagabond, the wanderer, the invisible, the other, the lost child that every child is, the one before becoming, before they made us who we are, the voice that is the undersinging, the one we have forgotten. Archduke Trio Rain, rain, downpour. There is no one in this town who understands her. Alone in the basement room of the house on Swicker Ave, the coal tile, twin beds for her and her sister, single beds made from bunks, short, small, narrow. Hers lies along the wall. From here she can reach the levered window. Rain floods in tongues down the trunks of the ash trees. Autumn rain in spring, washes of cold when the soft rain should be coming. In the corner, little gray box, her phonograph. The arm swings across, needle touches the groove. Piano. Opening bars of the Archduke Trio, Beethoven. The records come in cardboard sleeves, heritage recordings of the classics. Her mother sends away for them. Music in two voices, violin, violoncello. Third voice piano, hers. The strings call to the piano. Heart leaps like the white-tailed deer. Up, over, flying lands, runs, up and down, scales, ascending, merging. Music will not render into words. Beethoven speaks to her. Not to her directly, speaks through the strings. Heart, what else but throbbing? Pulse beats in a temple, little blue vein. Great carotid artery. Washes of blood, sobbing held back. He stops. Piano takes his theme. She will play this. Cello meets piano, growls into the lower registers, lifts like water, until the hammered sounds float, surrender their weight to the greater force. She presses against the cold wall of the basement, reaches up for the window frame, in the third movement, he takes her to his heaven. No one in the house. Night, spring night. Piano arcs above the pulsing strings. He takes her with his architecture, raises a scaffolding up to the dome. Not quickly. He has time. And now the caress along all her body. Andante cantabile ma pero con moto. This blunt, fierce man. This man speaks a longing that crystallizes hers. It is his not having that speaks into her, his ache that stretches her, muscle from bone, naked heart. Fifteen, and her lover. Her mother says she is too young for boys. The sound, the rain, the liquid air, presses her, tongue onto shoulder, mouth onto mouth, she never goes straight to the slow movement, though she wants it more than anything. Allegro moderato, scherzo allegro, waits for him. Arioso. Then the voice will come and fill up the spaces in the violins. The scraped bellies of the cellos will fill, and the violas, the double basses, the size of children, each one holding a voice. And that voice will mount up, will press into the spaces between things, the layers of socks, folded, of woolen shirts in bureau drawers, of empty coat sleeves, hats without heads. It will press between the edges of bricks, the tails of rats lying close in a cold wind. It will wind into the backs of clouds. It will howl. It will enter every bowl that has ever held soup. It will sing for its supper. It will sup. It will whine and then plead. It will soften and then it will ask. Are you warm enough? Have you light? Are you cold? Would you like something to eat? Is there someone with you? Are you alone? And then you will cry and lie down in your feather bed. 
and feel the great skims of your loneliness lifting away from you. Someone will speak to you and a change come over you. Your skin will be moist and fresh and remember itself its own name. Then the winnowing will come through you and you will sit up and laugh and go out under the trees and a coil unwind in your throat and the arc of your singing will come out. Hendrik Goltzius Hand Hendrik Goltzius, Dutch master engraver and painter, 1558 to 1617, fell at the age of one into the kitchen fire, badly damaging his right hand. Goltzius' drawing of his own disfigured hand reveals both the extent of the damage and his artist's skill in rendering it. And did his mother make that little sound? Her baby's hand stretched out to stop his fall? She'd reached to snatch him, hold the fire back. The molten hand clutched round a coal, refused. Its flesh insisted. The claw remaining grew. Veins laced pathways, sinews scraped and clung, entwined across the forming bones. It made an other thing. This strange topography became the drawer's hand, a channel for the eye. The sculpted thing could neither close nor open, and all sensation flowed into the pen. Its nerves refashioned sight. Perfection brought about by tempering, the ruined hand annealed in figured light. Last summer in the old Craig house. Musk melon, moth skirt, with those skin-like petals that come in pink and white. Mauve pink for musk, our mother, that summer our brother was born. Gold spun hair on the gunmetal green lilacs put there to help the fairies build their houses. And fairy rings she found in the mossy woods. She was certain of it. We were two lost princesses traveling with her in her last bid for freedom, while she still ran wild in the meadows and woods roads, traipsing us down through the salt marsh to sit on Craig's beach and have royal cups of tea, red Kool-Aid, that ran in streams down our white shirts. It was our last summer in that house, the end of our reign. He came in August, late August. They put a Union Jack out on the clothesline up the road to give birth to a son, lying in that brass iron bed. Now she was queen. Madonna of the Pinks. This is the title of a painting by Raphael, commissioned around 1506 from Adelaide degli Odi of Perugia, to take with her to the convent where she intended to seek refuge following her refusal of a proposed marriage. Ring of Metal, Saturn's Halo, carries this restraint. Bride's wish place, unacknowledged, sequestering. It is the liquid quality of the veil, a skim of rippling light that strikes to the heart of the matter. What is the matter? Here, the materia, flame, floats about her head. She is with child, of course, for all who are without. Holy Mother girl thing, perfection's lips have brushed you, painted out what blushed when you impossibly became. Mistress who sings now, holds the plum blossom to her cheek, pretends indifference and is, sick of heart, already packing. What will she need for her unrequited life? The image floats before her in violet. Accompaniment, perhaps, perhaps nothing. A pure space. Days of contemplation, a feeling of self, no other. The child reaches for the petals. 
beams, suckles, grows fat. Solstice. It is the eye of winter, this slit that lets in light. Stones crack and breastplates fall when fire speaks. A shuddering nor'easter pastes snow on every ledge, and steam's recurring breath uncoils from the sea. What is it to say that light has entered earth? The dead of winter rise with open mouths, mock soft limbs of early spring. But listen, here's what's true. She touched, I opened. Vox Animalia A piece of alder, tap, 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 back of the jackknife, and the bark skin comes off. Slide, sap smoothing, then the cut, just the angle needed for sound. Length of your index finger, whistle, little pipe. So the porcupine, windpipe, larynx tipped back to make those human sounds. Have you heard them? Nighttime in the spruce boughs, insistent cries, and if you could see their feet, you would never kill one. Feet like a human baby's feet, Voice calling out on a breath that makes love mates all night in the spruce trees. Something between a holler and a grunt. A voice that imitates our young. Holds a note and sobs on it. Bows, creaking, rubbing, and then a little cough. Alone in the tent, we lie and listen. No one wants a porcupine. Quills filled with air, slow moving, forepaws like a beaver's, insatiable, all night eating apple boughs, all night loving, quills softened. They sound like us, another vox humana, like the organ pipe, relic in the parlor, pump organ, stops labeled vox, box, box, tremulo, bellows filling air. Take this creature into your throat pipe, gristle, heft and hide, rasp, slide the whistle, the alder cuts its throat to speak its sound. 